is TV's very own Mr. Magic, Jonathan Ross. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Pen and Teller Fool Us, where our hopeful performers go head to head with two of the greatest magicians to be found outside of Hogwarts. <laughs> Tonight, our performers will try to win a chance to play Vegas by fooling two legends who have been performing together for over 35 years. That's incredible, isn't it? 35 years. That's got to put a strain on any relationship. Teller obviously ran out of things to say back in 1982. <laughs> Here they are. It's Pen and Teller. We know you don't really want to be fooled, but part of you, you do want to be fooled. Well, part we of you... do. We absolutely do. I mean, you don't get into magic unless you love that feeling. That's what brings you into it. So uh, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of pressure, but well, someone doing a really great trick, we have no idea how it's done, that's magic. So you're ready to be confounded and bamboozled and hopefully tricked and made to look small and silly in front of everyone? Yeah, we'll make it as hard as we can. Okay. For them. Ladies and gentlemen, Penn and Teller, take your seats, gentlemen. <laughs> If you're sitting down to me, you've got the best seats in the house, you're ready to go. Let's get started. Let's meet our first contender. Daniel Kramer. I'm Daniel Kramer, I'm 15 years old, and I'm a magician from North London. I don't know where the magic desire comes from, where Daniel gets it from. Um, he's loved doing magic for a long time. I just love magic, really. I'm not really into magic, really, but... Um, keeps him out of the way, I guess. I like to do a trick, and then every now and then I just break out into a joke. Dad, Hello, I get all of my gossip from my ketchup bottle. Yes? It's a very reliable source. <laughs> I've been preparing for tonight by practicing very hard. I've been testing it out on uh, family members. Mum, yes, yes. mum, pick a card in the garden. Well, take, um, um, take, take, take one, take one, take one. He loves Ben and Teller. He's got photos of them in his room. He talks about them at the dinner table. It's kind of a bit annoying, but I mean... Got to live with it. He's really excited about it and about the opportunity to do something in front of, as he sees it, the greatest magicians in the world. They'll be blown away. Um, they'll be speechless, even though one of them already is. I don't think my age will act as a hindrance because they'll realise that I'm quite dedicated to my art and that I really, really want to try and fool them. Will you please welcome the fabulous Mr. Daniel Kramer? For my first amazing illusion, I'm going to turn myself into a ten-year-old boy. <clears throat> Thank you very much. I was watching the, uh, the TV the other day, and I saw a magician do an amazing trick where he took one, two, three, four, five, six cards. He threw away one, two, three, and yet somehow he still had one, two, three, four, five, six cards. Now, when I first saw this, I was as amazed as you were, and I, too, forgot to applaud. Don't stop. Come on. <sighs> right. So I went down to my local shop. And I said to the man behind the counter, have you got that amazing trick when a magician takes one, two, three, four, five, six cards? He throws away one, two, three, and yet somehow he's still got one, two, three, four, five, six cards left. He said, no, this is the butchers. <laughs> you might want to go next door to the magic shop. So I went next door to the magic shop. I said to the man behind the counter, have you got that amazing trick when a magician takes one, two, three, four, five, six cards? He throws away one, two, three, and yet somehow he still has one, two, three, four, five, six cards left. He said, yes, we do. I said, I'll buy it, please. So I bought it, and I've got it with me right now. I'm going to perform it for you today. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> it's an amazing six card trick. Here we go. Mm. I take one, two, three, four, five, six cards. I throw away one, two, three cards, and yet somehow I still have one, two. <laughs> oh, hang on. One, two, three, four, five, six cards left. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, uh, this right here is a new invention of mine. Last time I tried it out, 
It didn't exactly go well, but hopefully it will work tonight. This is the amazing Twister Roo 3179.3142793651235. Five. <laughs> As you can see, my arm goes all the way inside, and if I open this up, you can see my arm is real, correct? Yes, yes. Did you like to make sure it's real? Sure. Ah! <laughs> it's, a, it's a joke. It's a, it's a joke. <laughs> now, what's going to happen is, Jonathan, is you're going to take that portion of the, uh, of the box. Right. And you're going to start twisting it nice and slowly in a sort of uh, a clockwise circular motion, okay. about three times, or until I start screaming out in pain, <laughs> telling you to stop. Okay? So I'm going to put my uh, arm in again. Okay. So if you'd like to take that portion of the box and start twisting it on the Ready? count of three. One, two, three, go! Ah, once! Ah, twice! Ah, three times a lady! There we go. I think that's You seem to have, uh, this didn't happen last time, but you've really hurt me. <laughs> That's not meant to happen. Now, let's try and reverse the process. Okay. Twist it around the other way if you like. Here we go. Ah, uh, keep going. Uh, uh, twice. Uh, and one more time. Uh, there we go. And hopefully, my arm is completely wow. back to normal. There we go. to talk. Have you ever been to Vegas before? I've, I've never been to Vegas. It'll be quite amazing if I, I did. I would so love it if, as a, as a result of the show, we got to send a, a boy of your age to Vegas to fully enjoy it, because I think, <laughs> I think it'd be going to be one hell of an experience for you. Um, and you did it all fabulously, and the personality you have on stage and the warmth you give off and the humour, that's a huge selling thing. I mean, that's what people will love to see you doing. Of course. So, you know, in, a way, in a way, the magic is in the best part of the act. You're the best part of the act. And I hope that would be great. Congratulations. It was really very fun. Let's see if Penn and Teller have got that clue. You just said something dead wrong. You said the magic wasn't the best part of his act. And I've got to tell you, some of the stuff in there, the more you know, the better it was. The opening trick he did, I have seen Lance Burton, master magician, star of his own Vegas show forever. I've seen him do that. We've both seen him do that. And his ending was not as good. Is that ending your own? No. Okay. <laughs> He's honest, isn't it? That's very, very insulting. You sold that so completely, I was sure that the ending of that was your own, because your acting was just beautiful on it. I also want to say about the, uh, the hand thing you did, what I love about that is you weren't finding some other child to torture, but you did it to yourself. <laughs> so you were the star of the trick and the victim of the trick, and I always love that. And I also want to tell you something, uh, Daniel, uh, really from the bottom of my heart. I want you to look right now at these two people sitting right here because that's the path you're on. If you don't like it to see here, <laughs> I can't tell you. Um, I'm, almost, uh, I'm almost a little teary-eyed because we can show you pictures of Teller doing shows when he was your age, and it's exactly the same. And I was doing the same stuff when I was 15. I just wasn't quite as good. So, uh, you did not fool us, but boy, you charmed us. And I'm telling you, you are us. Wow. Mr. Daniel Kramer, ladies and gentlemen. Great job, it was tremendous. It was great. That was great, wasn't it? Okay, uh, that's the end of part one, but by the magic of television, we will see you all the other side of this break. Please, don't go away. where the best magicians can win a trip to Las Vegas if they can bemuse the brilliant Penn and Teller with a fantastic trick. Let's get to know our next contender. Gazzo. Showtime. My name's Gazzo. I'm a street entertainer. I told you to stop stalking me. Why do you do it? I get enjoyment out of performing magic on the streets for people that could not afford to see me if I was famous. That's why I do it. Every time I see that man, he's with a different woman. Yeah. <laughs> To describe my style of magic would be very controversial, in your face, like wide boy, uh, market atmosphere. Yeah, yeah, no, stop it. I know it's on the stick. Shut up. I have a lot of passion for what I do, but it's a gift. Can't explain it. 
So I said to my wife, did you fake it last night? She said, no, I really was asleep. You know, I've been everywhere. I went from, say, England to Europe, then America to Canada, Cambodia, Thailand, and magic has allowed me to do that. Cheer up, sir. You wanted kids. But I say in my show that Tom Cruise is not really a samurai warrior or a secret agent, and Anthony Hopkins does not really eat people. I'm not really a mean person. It's just the way my character is when I perform. Don't oh, worry. Is he drunk? OK. <laughs> So if anybody out there are finding me offensive, I do apologise. Thank you. Is that your wife or are you on a business trip? Ladies and gentlemen, it's the bad boy from Bath. It's Gazao! But we don't need Vegas when we got this, right? <laughs> Hello, Mr. Penn and Mr. Teller. How are you? What I'm going to do is my rendition of the oldest trick in the world. Here it is, the classic cups and balls. Ball number one. Disappeared. <laughs> Ball number two. It's going to disappear the same. Excuse me? <laughs> yeah, that wasn't very strong misdirection. I thought if I look back, you look back. But you saw me do that, so. <laughs> this is a tough one with everybody watching. There are three balls being manipulated throughout, and two of them have vanished. The third one, I will blow on it, it will vanish right before your very eyes. <laughs> I bet you're wondering where the balls are. Your name, sir. Stand up, please. Put your hand in your hip pocket, your jean pocket, right hand, take out the balls. Are they in there? Uh, no. Of course they're not, you silly wally. Sit down. <laughs> Watch the dance of the little balls. Ball one goes here, or three goes there. Two goes here, or one goes here. Darren, right? Is it Darren? Did I hear it right? Point to a cup, Darren. Your choice. They're all the same, especially this one over there. That's a nice one. Which one do you want, Darren? Uh, this one. Which one, Darren? It's A, B, C. Pick A cup, Darren. A. <laughs> Thank you, Darren. <laughs> he thinks I influenced his choice by going pick A cup. No, I didn't influence your choice, did I? No. You could have had any cup, but I take the ball from me like this. Do you see it go? Not drunk. <laughs> take it from here, you see? Thank you. Two on the bottom, one on top. That's my favourite position. <laughs> Is this the way it's going to be? <laughs> There's too many balls to begin with, so what I'm going to do is eliminate a few to make the game a little bit easier to follow. So we have one ball there, one ball there. Darren, would you mind standing for me, please? Don't be embarrassed about your shirt. <laughs> okay? Darren, how many balls are being used throughout? Three. Three, yeah. Okay, so how many balls are underneath the middle cup? One. One, okay. So if I eliminate this one from the game, how many balls will it leave left in the game? Two. Correct. But if I eliminate this one from the game, how many balls will it left in the game? One. And where is it? In the middle. In the middle. There you are. I put this one away. But how come, Darren, this one's back so quick? Well, I'll tell you, Darren, because what I do is slide a hand. I don't take the ball and put it here. I just manipulate it in such a way that you think it's going away. But I keep it palmed, yeah? Okay. There's no ball here. But when I lift up the cup, what happens? I drop the ball from the back of the cup, create the illusion that it come from the cup, you stupid audience. <laughs> Sleep. Now you see the ball going in. Tap the cup three times, yeah? This one's back, which leaves how many balls there, Darren? Uh, one. If you can't, not sure, take a guess, Darren. One. <laughs> Two. Three. <laughs> three balls going at the same time, Darren. Ready? At the yeah. same time. How many here, Darren? None. You sure? <laughs> Orange. Uh... I'll take this trick one step further. Ready, Darren? I think so. Darren, this is a hat. A hat. Right, ordinary hat. I cover up the ball, and the ball is going to vanish. How many balls under the hat, Darren? One. Right. Ready? Watch it disappear. It's vanished. How many balls under the hat, Darren? Uh, one. No, it vanished, remember? Oh, I said, none of them. Yeah. <laughs> it's my fault I picked you. <laughs> How many
many balls, Darren? None. None? You don't believe it, though, do you? Not I'll true. bring it back, then. <laughs> Ready, Darren? Yep. How many balls? One. Yeah? How many now? None. <laughs> How many? None. Three. <laughs> you see, you thought I took the balls out, but I told you to watch the oldest trick in the world. Remember that. Guys <laughs> <laughs> out, ladies and gentlemen. Guys out. Come around here. Come around the front here. We've all seen people do what they call, I believe, the cups and balls. Is that what they call it? Cups and balls. Cups yeah. and balls. And most of us have seen it. We've seen people do it at parties, at kids' parties, that kind of thing, or sometimes swingers' parties. But that was just about, I think, the best I've ever seen. Would you not agree, ladies and gentlemen? Wasn't that the best out of this world? Awesome. Thank you very much. Can I tell you, do you want to start talking? Or do you, do you, want, to, do you want to start with anyone else? Could we, could we thank you from the bottom of our hearts for letting us be on your show? Oh. <laughs> It's no. just, it's just the greatest, it's great. Thank you. Literally, literally the oldest trick in magic done perfectly. That's what you just saw there. Very important to remember, in all art and all performance, it is the singer, not the song. And you're the best singer we've ever seen. Man. Thank you wow. very just much. Just the greatest, the greatest. The best they've ever seen. Thank you. By the absolute rules of this show you did not fool us because we do the trick but you did it better than us what more can we ask for? Wow. thank you ladies and gentlemen who didn't fool him he's not going to bang yet but Gaza you brought us all the way it's Gaza ladies and gentlemen great entertainment it's great entertainment thank you for coming on Gaza Kind of, he had me at the orange, but it was the melon, really, when I fell in love. <laughs> uh, it's time for our fast break. We'll make sure you come back, as we've got plenty more foolers ready to take on Mr. Penn and Mr. Teller, and good luck to all of them. Don't go away. Thank you, and welcome back to Fool Us. And it's time for us to meet our next magician, Alan Rorison. My name is Alan Orison. I am a close-up magician from a little town in Scotland called Port Glasgow. The town can be a little bit rough. If you mess up, someone will happily call you mid-routine just to think they've got one over on you, so you've, you've got to get your chops up quick. <laughs> I've always had a sort of little cheeky cocky thing going on. It's just part of the character and kind of the way this town shaped me and the way you need to be to get by. I prefer to find myself as like a sort of maybe underground desk kind of guy. I don't go to all the magic clubs and stuff like that. I prefer just to hit a bar if I want to try out a new idea and just actually try it on people. <laughs> if you're going to do magic, you should be able just to do it with anything. Whatever's lying about, you shouldn't need a special sort of circumstance. <laughs> I'm looking forward to performing for Penn and Teller. It's two magicians I've grew up watching, so it'll be a nice experience actually performing for someone I've looked up to. I mean, basically all my sort of magic career or life. Mm -hmm. He's a great magician, but part of me thinks he also got booked just so I had to try and say his name. So here we are, please welcome Mr. Alan Wallison. <laughs> I'd like to invite Mr. Jonathan Ross back on stage. Thank you. Hello. Thank you, David. Uh, you can stand there just down, that'd be perfect. And, um, it's my first time on here, but... Do you want me to...? Okay. <laughs> right, what I need you to do is, if you could be so gentle as to, um, just dig in, give them a little mix, and I need you to select out any four you would like. Okay. Take your time, I've got I'm not a proper shuffling person. So any four from here? Any four, yes. The face size don't matter, and um, they're basically just a cover. Two, uh, three, three and four. Okay, now, now, that's perfect, thank you. You've done your late stand this time. <laughs> On you come, so there you go. Right, for the next part... I really should pick in the big guys, should I? Um, <laughs> for the next part, we're going to need to make a table. Okay. Like a human table. So I will be using you for part of this, and we need one other person. So... From that side you'd like? From any side you like. Okay. If you could grab them while I explain what's going to happen. Who would like to do it? Which of the ladies here would like to do it? The lady there. What's your name? Rima. Rima, ladies and gentlemen. Right, 
context. Now, for this, um, I may as well explain the sort of genesis of this for me. Now, most magicians will practice either with cards or coins. I like to practice with both. Um, so it is something I carry around a lot. For this, we also need a nice big fluffy mat and a nice big hard table. And the reason being is we will place the coins out into a nice little sort of square and you cover each one of these up, okay? Now, what's going to happen is you start to cover all of these up, you're going to jump everything about. And it works in a very simple manner, just like this. If you tap, that will jump. Should be around the floor, let's go. It's very, it's all very boring. But again, all the magician would do is he would do this with all four of these, and he would clink, and everything would jump out of the way. But, no, 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 no. Don't applaud that, don't applaud that. Because in this one, you need the cards, you need the coins, you need the big fluffy mat. In fact, the mat's the most important thing. What that lets you do is sneakily put your thumb on things and pick it up as you're picking up with the cards and things like that. You can also slide stuff along. So I decided to try and figure out a way that would get rid of the big fluffy mat, the table, and um, basically everything that we don't need. So what I've decided to do is take the mat and get rid of it. Nice. I was aiming for your head there, I didn't miss it. It's, it's too high for you, isn't it? So... <laughs> So to do this, if you can have a wee seat over here, you can follow me, my dear, thank you. Just have a little seat there. See you, everyone. So you sit down first, big boy. There you go. <laughs> and what I need you to do is make a human table. Are you aware of how to do this? No, but you I'm going. <laughs> right. <laughs> Shall I...? Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> what end am I going at? <laughs> so you sit down here. Right. If you could be so kind, just put your hands out just like that for me. And we'll tuck the label of your tie in. Thank you. That way I won't know it's from Primark. If you can do the same. <laughs> thank you. And now what we need to do is just place a coin on each. Now, I need to make sure it's tail side up or my OCD will go mental. <laughs> and we also need the cover. Yes. So the cover, again, would be our little cards. Mm -hmm. Now, again, it's going to work the exact same way, but if I try and slide this now, it will obviously fall and hit the floor. Okay. In fact, can you put your hand down a bit? I told you I'm not that tall. Perfect. That one there. All right, there we are. And again, if I try and do it now, this means if I tap this one with that card and that one with that card, you should be able to feel everything happen. Wow. Now, I'll let you feel both. You cross your hand as the receiving and the only one here. We will try and let you feel both of these. So if you just click, you should be able to feel both as it jumps. Now leaving three over here. And for the very last one, let me just try and see if I can do this. You can pop it and it will jump all the way over. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, that was incredible. Why don't, while we've got the chairs, why don't we, uh, we can still use the chairs. We'll let Pan and Teller confer that for a bit. Now, I've known Pan and Teller on and off for about 20 years, and it's only in the last six months or so that Penn has started understanding me, I yeah. like, as you say. <laughs> we, uh, for him, when we're speaking now, for him, what he hears is... Yeah, yeah. It's completely actually. different language. It's like two ducks sitting out there in front of him, as far as this is <laughs> I think you're in with a pretty good chance. I'm going to ask, I'm going to jump in now, I think. We just have to ask you one question, and, uh... It, it, if we're wrong about this, you have fooled us. We're not going to try to sneak in a second guess because we don't have a second guess. <laughs> uh, if we don't know this, you fooled us. Would you just hold your hands up like this and just tell us, just honestly, I guess, could you do that routine exactly the same if you took off all your jewelry? What jewelry are you um, procuring? Rings. Bang on, bud. Okay. <laughs> and I also have to add, he... He also fooled me. He fooled you. It was another teller one. Wow. I think it was a teller one. He I'm a female magician, and I was once quoted as a cross between Bette Midler and Mary Poppins. At 15, the headmistress of my convent school asked me what I wanted to be, and I said I wanted to be a Moulin Rouge feather-clad showgirl, which I just got a disapproving stare, but here I am. I'm influenced by theatre and musicals and shows and cabaret and costumes. The Magic Circle made me Sage Magician of the Year, and that was the first woman ever to win that. It's fantastic being one of the very few female magicians in the world because no one else is doing what I'm doing. I think it's about to get hot in here. I have to say, I'm so 
no relief because I was thinking of wearing that outfit tonight myself, and I'm glad I didn't. Will you please welcome Womany? <laughs> a very difficult and dangerous trick. I am looking for somebody to tie me up. <laughs> I found him. It is you. Oh, well, thank you very much. I'm very kind of you. Well, um... Ronnie? Please tie me up. Oh, Place okay. a double <laughs> knot upon this wrist. Okay. All right. So, a nice double so... knot. Nice and tight. Tight. Okay. <sighs> One and... Another one. <laughs> OK, that's tight. That's tight. And oh. now tie my hands up behind my back. OK. Very, very tight. Things are looking up. OK. So. <laughs> one knot and a, two, a double knot again. A double knot. Make sure they're very, very tight. OK. Two knots. OK. Good. We need some more rope. More rope. Please pass the rope around my neck and tie very, very tightly. Mr Ross, two knots around my neck. So another knot here. Yes. Okay. So, oops. So that's one. OK. For sure. And then the other one uh, through there. Perfect. Take no notice, I'm but a fair, frail woman. Two knots right tight around the neck. And now through my arms, please, okay. from the back to the through front. Okay. Then round again, make sure they're tightly okay. bound. Okay. And now tie them in front of my... Oh, okay, this one might take longer. <laughs> <laughs> what are you looking at? I'm not looking at the knot. Okay, one, <laughs> two, three, four, here we go. <laughs> Uh, uh, oh, I got it. I got a bit pulled up on my own knot there. Hold on. OK, there. Two. Two, Good. two. Good. You've got tight. <laughs> and now around my derriere and to the front. Right, we're doing upstairs and downstairs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Another double knot down here? Yes, and okay, to the well, Hold on. Oh. Hold on. I nearly sat on your head. Oh. <laughs> it's done. That's and a... now in front of my legs, nice and tight. Around the front? Yes. Oh, you really are. You're not going to be able to move, Mike. Good. OK. So, so ladies is... and gentlemen, you can see that I'm thoroughly tied up. Would you agree? <laughs> Who could have known that magic would be such fun? Uh, okay. OK. Good. Done. And Sandy can do the rest. Monsieur Ross. Ooh, I'm exhausted. I don't know how people can get do this in the bedroom. I wouldn't have any energy for anything. <laughs> I have to send out for someone else. <laughs> Please step into my tunnel of love. OK. We'll see. Okay. Edge forward. And now, shoulders back, chest out, stomach in, <laughs> cheeks tight. I shall enter in behind you. Oh, dear. I'm coming in. The first. Can you feel my presence? I feel both of them. <laughs> <laughs> so now, Sandy is going to raise the tongue of love and wiggle it. So are you ready? One, two, three, up. Monsieur Ross, just relax. One, two, three, and down. Wow. Still in place, and my jacket's blown away. That was quite something. If only we had the time, we could keep doing that till one of us was naked. You could, and... uh, <laughs> you fool all then, they're the two you've got to worry about. They're going to talk about it now. So I'll cut these off. The knots are still in place, I can yes. see that. Okay, where shall I start? Um, uh, at my neck, please. Oh, okay, be careful now. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. The front area, the breasticles, okay. And, uh, my okay. wrist. The wrists, okay. I think I'm out. And I think you're out of there. Like that wasn't that spectacular, Romani. <laughs> what a great performance. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I can tell you, I didn't do anything to help that. I didn't take my jacket off. I didn't do anything. No. Oh. That was a terrific performance. Ooh. I don't know whether the guys have worked it out. They look quite content over there, but maybe they they're did. just enjoying the view. Penn Teller, do you know how she did it? As far as the rope tie, this was used extensively in spirit cabinets, where people would be tied up like this by a committee from the audience, then put in a cabinet, and it was all done to prove the existence of the spirit world. It's wonderful for it to be done with sexual flirtation instead. Something good <laughs> instead of something evil. It's a variation on the Keller rope tie. I think you recognize that. And then all you need is someone who is compliant and bends to your every whim, like Jonathan Ross. <laughs> It was wonderfully done. Happy to oblige. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, she was 